Well, everything's freezing up, but the Holy Spirit is not freezing up. He's heating up. He's heating up. And God is with us here today. Jesus is with us here today. Whatever hurts you may be going through, whatever difficulties you're going through, I want you to believe today that God is able. He is all powerful. He knows everything. And he's got you in the palm of his hands. And there's nothing that you're going through that he hasn't allowed for your greater good, your greater eternal good. And you won't regret it. One second after you die, you won't regret the hardships that you're going through. Maybe it's small things. Me and Morgan lost our hot water. Our uh, hot water on demand froze up and broke the pipes and water started spraying everywhere. But I was, I'm, we're never there. So I'm really thanking God that we were there when this happened. And I was able to shut the water off. Otherwise the whole place would have flooded. So there's blessings even in trials. And you know, $350 later, I got a new one coming. So that's not so bad. There's a lot of people suffering right now with frozen heating and frozen cars and all kinds of things. But there's deeper suffering. There's suffering when you're worried about your kids. You're worried about your grandkids. There's suffering when you're not sure what God wants you to do. There's suffering when there's physical ailments. Donnie's going through this right now. Why is God allowing this? What's going on? And there are times when you are cornered and you got nowhere to go and you're all out of ideas and you can't hear God telling you anything. You're just sort of in the corner with your back against the wall and you need him so desperately to lead you to guide you and maybe it's hard to have faith in those times when your back's against the wall and you don't know exactly where to turn and as always I believe we need to go to our Bible and learn about who God is because the God of the Bible is the same God that lives in you right now the God in the Bible of the Old Testament and the New Testament is our God and he is here right now and he hasn't changed He's exactly the same. That's why you gain faith from reading the Bible. You learn about who God is and how he works. How he blesses you when you obey him. How you hurt yourself when you don't obey him. You're cursed. But the grace and mercy of Jesus, thank the Lord for that. Because none of us could stand without the grace and mercy of Jesus. But we gotta, we gotta follow him, don't we? We got to follow him. I'm going to open up in prayer. Lord, I do pray for all those that are struggling with frozen furnaces and cars. I pray for those that are struggling with hurts in their heart. With deep sorrow. With confusion. With unrest. With depression. Misery. Pain. God, you delivered me from this pain. I am begging you that you will deliver others from this pain, Lord. And that you will lead us today and help us to understand more of who you are and how you work and how much you love us and how much your way is the right way your way is truth your way is life and you are the only way and God forgive us for running to idols and different things that don't really help us God take those idols away we submit to you and we're looking to you and only you. In your name, amen. Have you ever felt like your back was against the wall? <clears throat> Satan had you cornered. And he got you. And you can't get out. Enemies are closing in on you from all sides. I want you to think about what enemies are because many times we think enemies are from some an antagonistic person usually a friend or a person in the church that that doesn't like you that's upset with you but that's not actually the enemy the enemy is we fight not against flesh and blood we we fight against the spirits in the dark places the demons satan satan is behind all these miseries 
And don't let Satan overtake you. Don't repay evil with evil, but fight evil with good. Don't repay evil for evil. Maybe you're exhausted. You tried everything, but you're out of ideas and nothing is working and you're miserable. You're running out of hope. Your faith is faltering and you're afraid. Everything's closing in on you. You know, these days, maybe it's you, you turn on your news and you watch the news one too many times and you can be full of fear, murder, rape, new diseases, famine. What's going to happen this summer? Doesn't look like there's enough moisture. So we're praying for more moisture, but fires, right? Last year we had record breaking fires. What's going to happen this summer? And you guys have all heard of how fertilizer is just going through the roof. It's getting harder to grow food. And you can't grow food in a drought. And the cost of living tends to keep going up. I don't want to just bring you a bunch of bad news. I want to remind you that this is because God loves us. And this country and this world has turned its back on God. And God is always the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And he always acts the same. He says, look, if you're going to turn away from me, I'm going to bring pestilence. I'm going to bring famine. I'm going to bring war. He's always done it. Read your Old Testament over and over and over again. And that's not going to go away because you get a new guy voted in. It's only going to go away if we turn back to God. If we say, oh, we're sorry, we're wrong, we're going to do it your way, not our way anymore. We have to do that. That is what will change our world. That's what will change your circumstances. But in the middle of this storm, we have Jesus in us. And he's promised that he will never leave us or forsake us. It might be a financial problem. The bills keep getting bigger and the paychecks smaller. You're cornered. You don't know what to do or where to go. And you can't see any way out. But the card house of debt is starting to crumble and you're crumbling with it. Maybe you're in that position right now. I will tell you that if you have financial problems, the first thing you do is get your bank statement out and go through all the things that you bought and start repenting. Start repenting. Lord, I spent your money wrong. I shouldn't have bought that. I shouldn't have bought that. I shouldn't have bought that. But maybe it's financial hardship. Maybe it's your health. You're struggling. You got no energy, ongoing pain and discomfort. And you've been to the doctors and the specialists. But at this point, nothing is helping. Maybe your marriage seems lost. Hopeless. And you're basically just roommates. And you don't really love each other anymore. And there is a whole bunch of mess between you and your wife or you and your husband. And you can't see any hope. Or maybe it's a son or a daughter or a brother or a sister. Maybe it's just the world around you that's smothering you in fear and instability and confusion and the deep realization that you're being controlled and manipulated by people in power that you don't believe in. And you're afraid. You're afraid for your future. You're afraid for your kids. You're afraid for your church. And you're afraid. Being in the corner with your back against the wall is a place filled with anxiety and fear. It's easy to give up hope when everything is caving in around you. It's so your enemies will know that he is the Lord. I want to remind you today that God loves you and he has your best eternal interests in mind at all times. And he is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. And when you have no hope, it's actually the best place to be in because your only hope that you have is Christ. And when you get to that place where your only hope you have is Christ, you're in the right spot. And you now have God. And I want to encourage you today. You might be cornered, but God is in your corner. And his plan is perfect. If you trust him, if you listen, if you wait, waiting is a big part of trusting him. Waiting. You don't move without him. You wait. Wait upon the Lord. He shall renew your strength. He shall mount you up on the wings of eagles. 
You shall run and not faint. You shall walk and not be weary. Wait upon the Lord. And he will pave the way for his glory to shine through you. If you trust him. If you follow him. If you do what he says, you obey him. He will pave the way for his glory to shine through you in this difficult time. And he will fill you full of peace, joy, satisfaction, self-control. No matter what your circumstances are. The title of my sermon today is... What do you do when Satan has you cornered? Now, I've got a, a long scripture reading. I'm going to go through it quite quickly. It's in Exodus 14. This is an old story that we're all familiar with, but I want to look at some details. So pay attention to the details. What you will notice is God hardened the hearts of the enemies. Why? Because he wanted to show the enemies that he is God. He wanted to save the Egyptians. And right now, you are going through suffering of various kinds and your non-Christian friends and family and neighbors are watching you. It's important. Preaching doesn't do it. Living it does it. We love one another. We support one another. We encourage one another. We show the world around us who Jesus is by how you handle your circumstances. It's very important we get this right. It's the difference between people getting saved and not getting saved. Of course, that's up to the Holy Spirit. But he has chosen to use you. And here's an example of how he's done this. Exodus 14. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Order the Israelites to turn back and camp by, I can't pronounce this, pi hath heroth <laughs> between Magdal and the sea. Camp there along the shore across from Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. You're backed up in a corner. God has planned this. He wants this. Why? For his glory. To show everybody who he is. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. See? After this, the Egyptians, the enemies, the non-Christians will know that I am the Lord. He has put you in this position because he's showing everyone around you who he is. That he's the Lord. How you decide to trust or not trust matters. It matters for eternal reasons. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Israelites camped there as they were told. When the word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds. What have we done letting all those Israelite slaves get away? Just so you know, the ten plagues happened. God hardened the heart of the Pharaoh. Each one of the plagues addressed one of the Egyptian gods. Why did God do this? He did this because he loves the Egyptians. He wanted to prove to the Egyptians that the frog god is a myth. That the fly god is a myth. That worshipping the, the Nile is ridiculous. He turned it to blood. And eventually worshipping the Pharaoh, he killed the eldest child of everyone who did not have the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. And that was the final plague where the Pharaoh lost his son and he said, okay, go. But then they changed their mind. And God planned this. This was all planned. For why? For his glory. To show your enemies who Jesus is. Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And he's put these circumstances in your life for his glory. I think we've seen this working at Vic's funeral. And if I might say, Marion, your speech was Holy Spirit filled. It was showing God's glory in this dark time 
Just so you know, Sandy still has some cousins with her, but soon she won't, and she's going to need everybody to visit her as often as possible. As often as possible. The Pharaoh, what have we done letting all those Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So the Pharaoh harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots, along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander, the whole army of Egypt. Then the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fists raised in defiance. The Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore near pi hath Hiroth, across from Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. Are you panicking? God has told them what to do. They have obeyed, and yet they are still afraid. Even when we're in God's will, you can still be afraid, because why? You don't see what, what God's up to, even when he's told you what he's up to. You don't see it, so you're afraid. So they're panicking. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves in, for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. I want you to know that slavery to sin is a metaphor to slaves to the Egyptians. Slave to substances. Slave to habits. Slave to character flaws. It's better to go that way because at least I can get a temporary buzz. And Jesus says, no, trust me, trust in the Lord. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, and Jesus is telling you this right now, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. Take that home with you today. Stand still. Watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Here's my favorite verse. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Sometimes God says, stop praying. Start moving. Get it done. Obey me. Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. There's the God of the impossible right there. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through the Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and his charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. All Westlock will see his glory and know that he is Lord. That's why it matters how we trust when we are cornered, when we are hopeless, when we have all this pain and suffering. It matters. Trust the Lord. People are watching. Then the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and the Israelite camps. God is protecting them. As darkness fell, the cloud turned into fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, with walls of water on each side. That's the God of the impossible. No man could have ever dreamed that. Then the Egyptians, all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. 
God is in control. Don't, don't ever doubt that God is in control of Satan. He created Satan. God is in control of our government. God is in control of you. God is in control of your family. He knows what he is doing. He threw them into confusion. I think we're going to see a world around us this summer. Confused. Scared. I don't believe it's going to get better until it gets worse, folks. Because people aren't repenting. It's starting. I'm seeing more and more people going, oh, okay, this is ridiculous. I've got to turn back to God. we got to turn back to God. I'm seeing more people, but I am not seeing the thousands that I believe are going to come from this county. And they're not going to come because of me or not even because of you. They're going to come because of us showing them who Jesus is by the way we live, by the way we love, by the way we forgive, by the way we obey. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites, the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. See, they're now getting faith. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back to cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers. The entire army of Pharaoh, of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. The entire army of the most powerful government in, in that day wiped out. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the waters stood up like a wall on both sides. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power, when the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. What do you do when Satan has you cornered? Point number one, God has planned this so that your enemies will know that he is Lord. God has planned this in your life so that your enemies will know that he is Lord. There's a reason why you're going through this. And it's a good reason. And you are going to be filled with awe before him. And put your faith in the Lord. It's going to, it's going to build your faith. Whatever you're going through right now, trust him. So, first of all, then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Order the Israelites to turn back and camp by the Piahath Heroth between Magdal and the sea. Camp there along the shore across from Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. I'm going to change that. I have planned this in order to display my glory through the liberal government. It affects us today. It's the same God. He's planned this. The whole world, let's be honest here, the whole world is going the wrong way. We've abandoned God. God loves the world. He died for the world. He's planned COVID. He's planned famine. He's planned war. He's planned these circumstances in your life. So that he can show who he is to everybody that's watching you. Through the Pharaoh and his whole army. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped there as they were told. God allows hardship in your life because it grows you. It tests you. It drives you to your knees. It forces you. To believe in him. 
It's mercy, actually, when he takes away all your own understanding. All those tricks and idols that used to work for you don't work anymore. And you have nowhere to go. You're, at, you're against the, the wall. You're standing on the beach and there's an ocean in front of you. And there's an army of enemies coming at you. And you have nowhere to go. And your own little efforts aren't going to help anymore. It's actually a wonderful time to be in that spot. If you're in that spot, embrace that spot. It's a good time. It's a time when you're going to see Jesus. And he's going to move. And he's in control. But there's another reason. It's not just for you. It's for all those watching you. It's so your enemies will know that he is the Lord. He is God. He's allowing you to be cornered so that he can display his glory for the world around you to see. You see, God loves your enemies. God loves the pagan world around us and he's using your struggles and hardships to show the world around you who he is. See, it's not just about your joy. It's not just about your comfort. It's about the kingdom. It's about a whole bunch of people that are lost and they can't see. They're blind. They don't see God. They don't see that God created the sun. That God made it ice cold this week. That God's going to warm it up again. That God is there with your vehicle. That God is there with your furnace. That God is here in your life. With your struggling children. With your finances. With your health. God is there. And these circumstances are planned by God. For his glory. It grows you. But it also shows the world around you. Who he is. God rescued the Israelites from slavery, but he was up to more than just taking them to the promised land. He planned the whole thing in order to show them his power and to show their enemies his power, his glory, so that the Egyptians, the Israelites' enemies, would know that he is Lord. A lot of people don't know this, but when the Egyptians left Egypt... Sorry, when the Israelites left Egypt with Moses, a lot of Egyptians went with them. There was a lot of Egyptians that got saved. Come on in. Good to see you. A lot of Egyptians got saved. Because they seen the power of God. Exodus 14.4 And once again I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. After this the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So when you're in a spot where you're going, what is going on? How come you're doing this to me, Lord? I can't take it anymore. I have no hope. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. My back's against the wall. I want you to remember something. God is in charge and he planned this. And he planned this to show the world around you who he is. Embrace it. It's an opportunity. We always pray, oh God, save my son. Save my daughter. Save my neighbor. I don't want him to go to hell. God is doing this. And he's doing this through pestilence, famine, war, inflation. He's doing this. And it's his plan. And how we embrace it matters. When you're cornered and you have no idea where to turn, rest in the fact that Jesus is using this situation in your life to show the world around you that he is Lord. This is not just a trial that will test your faith. It is a public demonstration of the power and love of God. Your faithfulness to listen and obey will result in others getting saved. Now, you can think about your own life in this last year. Are there times where you could say it got really hard and then you watched God work in your situation and others seen it? Or are there times when it got really hard and you didn't trust God? And what you ended up with was an opportunity wasted and people didn't see the power of God because you didn't trust Him. You didn't believe in Him. This next year, it's going to get tough. But it's glorious. You know, I don't want to be dis dismal. We have Jesus. And we have each other. And we're not going to go without shelter and food and heat. Because we have each other. And that's part of what it means to be a Christian. You know, there might be some of us shacking up together. I don't know. 
We're going to have to share more food. We're going to have to learn how to make casseroles with cheaper ingredients. It's getting vicious. And, and it's because God wants it. He wants your enemies to know that he is Lord. And how we embrace these circumstances in your life matters. It matters. Is somebody sinned hardcore against you? If you choose to just be bitter about it, you're not showing who Jesus is at all. If you forgive, and sometimes, and all the time actually, you can't forgive without Christ. Christ has to give you the power to forgive. You can't forgive certain things. It's not forgivable. But everything's forgivable when you let Christ take over. And when people see you forgive the unforgivable, they're seeing the glory of God. They're not seeing your glory. They're seeing His glory. They're seeing who Jesus is. Have you got addictions that you just can't get around? When people see you get out of that pit, they're seeing the glory of God. And we're there for you, by the way. Most of us have been there. Most of us know what it feels like. There are pathways out of that pit. And it can be done. But it can only be done through Christ. If you're trying to do it on your own, you're just going to Rubik's Cube your addictions into something else. But if you deal with it with the cross, you're going to kill those addictions. Those addictions will be gone. And you'll be addicted to Jesus and his joy and his power. And his power never diminishes. It never goes away. And that buzz from joy never goes down. You never have coming down. It's not a false high. It's a real high. A high from the most high. The highest. God. You can be free. Whatever is cornering you right now in your life, I want you to think about it. And I want you to give it up. And I want you to remember that this is an opportunity for everyone around you to see the glory of God in your life. And how you choose to have faith matters. Because it matters more than preaching. It matters more than witnessing. Because they're seeing it with their own eyes. The glory of God. Parting the Red Sea. Wiping out your enemies. Right in front of you. That's the God we serve. Point two. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. <laughs> Sounds easy, doesn't it? Not so easy when you're standing on the beach and there's an ocean in front of you and there's the whole entire army of your enemies all geared up to, to kill you. Not so easy. But God said to you today, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. Is it that easy? I'm here to tell you, rest in Jesus. He's not dead. He's not deaf. He's all powerful. He doesn't allow anything in your life that he doesn't want there for your greater eternal good. Trust him. Embrace it. Oh, I'm going to lose my house. Well, then he wants you to move. Oh, I lost my job. Well, he wants you to work somewhere else. Oh, my friend deserted me. Maybe even your spouse. There's nothing that's happening to you that he's not in control of. And, it, and here's, here's something I want you to remember. It's not based on your performance. Do you know how many Israelites were there that had weak faith? Standing on the beach? They had all kinds of sin in their life. All kinds of idol worship. We know this because just a few days later they made a golden calf and started worshiping a golden calf. Aaron actually was part of that. It's disgusting what they did. And those people were on the beach and you know what God did? He rescued them because of his mercy, because of his grace. And it wasn't just about making them safe. It was about showing everyone who he is, showing your enemies who he is. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. Let's read this. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked. 
Boy, have you ever panicked? I, I panic all the time. <laughs> Right? Some circumstance will happen, or oh, I'll hear some information, or something's negative, or criticism, or, or hatred even. And I'm panicking. My bank account's empty. I got a stack of bills. My health went down. The other day I passed out. Doctor said it was from exhaustion. I don't know what. I, it actually, I've, I've had this, when I was on the rigs, it happened quite often. I passed out. Morgan just panicked. I was on the couch going like this and not responsive, and she called the ambulance, and I was hauled into the hospital by ambulance, and I appreciate it, Morgan. But it, I didn't panic. Morgan panicked. <laughs> and I know that God took me there. And I met some nurses, and it was, it was a great experience, actually. And I got an extra half an hour of sleep because I slept at the hospital. Circumstances in our lives are there for a reason. It's not by chance. Everything that happens to you is for a reason. And the reason is for God to be glorified. It's not just to make you comfortable, it's to make you mature, and it's to show the world around you who he is. I know you have the same heart as me. You don't want your neighbors to go to hell. Hell is a real thing. You know, we had Vic's funeral, and it was so easy to have a funeral with somebody that we know his faith was strong. His faith was strong. But I've done funerals where I don't know. And it hits me hard. I don't know if they went to heaven or not. The evidence isn't there. I, I don't know. In the end, it's up to God. It's not up to me. But it's a scary thought, isn't it? That you might have a son that might not go to heaven when he dies. You have a daughter that doesn't know Jesus. And she's just floundering around in the world. And how is she going to know Jesus if we're always so scared we can't trust him? If we don't allow him to show who he is through you, through your bad circumstances, through these hardships that you're going through, we have Jesus. He's all powerful. And he loves you. And there's nothing that's happened to you that isn't there for a reason. And he t says very clearly here what the reason is so that he will be glorified. And the world around you will know that he is Lord. He is Lord. People are watching. Don't be afraid. Your back's against the wall, but God owns the wall. You're in the corner, but God is in your corner. And he has full power to not only rescue you, but to use you as a public example of who he is. God is telling me that he has a plan to save souls in Westlock. I'm not going to pull any punches here. This is not just a church that's going to make people comfortable for six or seven more funerals and then it's dead. Because we're six or seven funerals in the next five years for sure. Might be mine. God has a plan beyond that for this little church. He has a plan to save your friends, family, and enemies. And he's going to show his glory through how you handle your circumstances. How you handle that wall that you can't get around, that you can't see any hope. How you believe in him, how you trust him, and he's going to part the sea. And you're going to walk across in, in dry land, and he's going to get rid of your enemies. That's his job, not your job. Your job is not to get rid of your enemies. Your job is to trust in the Lord and not lean on your own understanding. Your job is to love your enemies, to pray for them, to love them, to love them enough to show them who Jesus is by how you handle your circumstances. If you're afraid, it's understandable, but it means you don't quite trust God, doesn't it? 
The Israelites were standing on the beach. God told them to be there. A cloud was hiding them from their enemies. A fire. How much more proof do they want? They just finished watching the ten plagues. Their faith should have been through the roof. But they're on the beach scared. There's no other way to explain it other than they don't quite trust God, do they? You see, when we're afraid, it's okay. It's understandable to be afraid. But it means we don't quite trust God. We don't trust Him. We don't actually think that He knows what we're going through. We don't actually think that He's going to do something about what we're going through. And I want to remind you this morning, He hears you. He knows every detail. And it's all for His glory through you. And he has a plan, and it's a perfect plan. And he is the God of the impossible. Follow him. Trust him. He will rescue you. Embrace this opportunity. You can't see what God sees. You can't do what God can do. This is the way of showing the world around you his glory, his power, his unfailing love. When you're cornered and your world is caving in around you, the more helpless you are, the better. The, the less of me, the more of him. The less of you, the more of him. That's why humility is the key to having the power of God in your life. Pride is a result of religion. Humility is a result of faith. The more you know Jesus, the more you're going to get down on the ground and realize how powerful he is, how loving he is, how, how much grace and mercy, how much you can trust him and how much you hate sin because sin only hurts you and how much you want to get away from that. The more you know him, the more humble you will get. Humility is everything. That's why... You know, if my people who are called by my name, first step, will humble themselves. Canada needs to humble themselves. And pray. And seek his face. And turn from our wicked ways. Humility is the first step. So if you're in a corner, and you've got no hope, and you can't find any way of getting out of it, it's a great place to be. Because your only hope is in Jesus Christ. And once you're there, just sit back, rest, be still, and know that he is God. And trust him. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. You know, this is us too. This is us. If you're afraid, it's understandable. But examine your heart and confess and repent any sin that you find there. You see, when you're cornered and your world is caving around you, the more helpless you are, the better. Don't be afraid. Just stand still. Watch the Lord rescue you today. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Point number three and last point. Put your faith in the Lord. He will rescue you. Put your faith in the Lord. He will rescue you. Did he rescue Vic? Yes. He did. And now we are praying that he rescues Sandy. Because this is very difficult for her. See, when you're a Christian, death is graduation. And it's our greatest hope. And I want you to remind yourself, whatever your circumstances are, you're not going to be there forever. God will rescue you. He'll rescue you by taking you home, if nothing else. But he has a plan. He loves your enemies. God loves your enemies. And he wants them to be saved. And how you choose to embrace your circumstances is how you show the world around you who Jesus is. Put your faith in the Lord. He will rescue you. 
That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the land, hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, let me say this another way. When the people of Westlock saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against your enemies, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and his servant Moses. Here's some things that you can do if you find yourself in a corner and you find yourself with nowhere to turn and you're full of fear, anxiety, and along with that comes this feeling of isolation. Nobody cares. God must not care. Otherwise, this wouldn't be happening to me. You, 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 you hear Satan lying to you. God must be dead. He's, he's, he's got me in this horrendous situation. And why? I thought when I believe in him, he's supposed, everything's supposed to be good. Not everything's supposed to be good. It's supposed to be for his glory. And your hard circumstances can make somebody change their mind about God through the Holy Spirit and not go to hell when they die. How important is that? Are you willing to give your comfort away so that somebody can meet Jesus and not go to hell when they die? Because that's what he's asking you to do. Be still and know that I am God. Let him rescue you. He will. It's the same God. The same God that delivered the Israelites is here today delivering you. And he knows what he's doing. And you can trust him. First of all, you should do this every morning. You should do this throughout the day. A dozen times a day. Maybe more. Examine your heart and confess and repent any sin that you find there. Examine your heart. Lord, if there's any wicked way in me, even if I don't know about it, I want to get rid of it. Clear the path between you and God. Get rid of all sin. If you've got habits that you can't get rid of, get some help. If God's telling you to quit something, might be jealousy, might be trust, might be anger, might be forgiveness issues, whatever it is, deal with it. This is first priority. It's more important than your paycheck. It's more important than your bills. Cleanse your heart. Remind yourself that God loves you and he is all powerful. Remind yourself, God does love you. You know, one of the first songs that we learned when I was a kid was Jesus Loves Me. And it's actually the most important song. We love him because he first loved us. Jesus loves you. Remind yourself, he loves you. With all your dirty diapers and all your mistakes, you're his child and he loves you. And remind yourself that he is all powerful. He can do anything. Hand God the keys to your situation. Nail it to that cross. That's, that's what all these ribbons are. Hand God the keys to your circumstance, the keys to your anxiety, the keys to your, your problems. Hand it to Him. Trust Him. I see a lot of people trying to quit, you know, drugs and drinking and stuff, and some of them even achieve it, but they're not handing it over to Jesus. They're just trying to stop drinking. When you hand it over to Jesus, you can rest. He's powerful. He can deliver you. And some things are just practical. I had a friend in Bible school that just could not get away from the, the sin of pornography. Couldn't do it. He came to me all the time. You got to pray for me. I just can't. I can't quit. He was so full of shame and guilt all the time. He hated himself. And I reminded him, because I know, I've been there. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And he is all powerful. And then we prayed. And then I said, I know, God told me what to do. He said, what? I went over to his room and I took his door off. He had no door. And guess what? His porn habit went away. Sometimes it's just practical decisions. You want to get rid of something? Do what it takes. The Bible says if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Get serious. 
If you want some of those things out of your life, get serious. There is always a practical solution. I took the door off. He had no privacy. Porn habit gone. And after six months, it got out of his system and he didn't desire it anymore. It takes time. Any addiction takes time. Be patient. But give it to God. Hand God the keys to your situation. Surrender all outcomes to Him. I think I might be losing my job. That's your problem. That's not my problem. If you want me to lose my job, I will lose my job. It means you have a different job for me. Gary, I think you just came through a miracle where God didn't let you go back to work. And there were health reasons why he didn't get you back to work. And you recognize that now. And I think your faith grew. See, God knows what's best for you. You don't. God does. Adrian, your faith grew. You had cancer in your kidney. I know this is still ongoing. But the news is really good right now. And if the news was bad, and, I, and I've talked to you, you're my friend. Your faith is amazing. You got stronger faith than your wife. Because she's, she's worried. You're not worried. You know that if you die and it's time to go, you're going to die. And if he wants to heal you, you'll be healed. You surrender all outcomes to him. You don't tell God what to do when you pray. That's not praying properly. You don't go, hey God, I'm going bald. Please give me some hair. And then if he doesn't give you hair, you're mad at him. Or God, I, I want my girlfriend to come back to me. What you pray is, God, if you want her to come back to me, then allow it. And if you don't, take her away. You surrender all outcomes to him. Because you trust him. Because he can see the future. And he's God. And he knows what's best for you. Don't tell God what to do. Pray, your will be done. Jesus himself prayed this at the Garden of Gethsemane. Remove this cup from me, Lord. I don't want to do this. He was all man, right? He, he knew he was going to get crucified. And he begged God, take this away from me. But then in the end he says, but your will be done, not mine. God himself prayed that way. We must pray that way. Your will be done, not mine. I trust you. Remember, if you're afraid, it means you don't quite trust him. So start trusting him and you won't be afraid. Get on your knees, read your Bible, and trust him. He knows what he's doing. Look at what he did with the Israelites here. He's doing that in your life right now. He's going to rescue you from your enemies. He's going to rescue you from your fear and your doubt. And he's going to fill you full of joy and satisfaction and purpose. If you follow him. You know, I got a lot of people that say they believe in Jesus, but do you actually believe in him? Believing in him means I'm going to rest in you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to wait for you to act. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. Listen, wait, and obey. Listen, wait, and obey. There's a big way to listen. Read your Bible. He's talking to you. Read your Bible. But also pray. Spend time with Him. Get serious about it. A couple of hours on your knees will do you a lot of good. It does you a lot more good than, than going through TikTok. Not all TikTok is bad. Not all Netflix is bad. Not all Facebook is bad. But often that's just a distraction from your stress. And anything that's just distracting you isn't solving anything. Alcohol distracts you from your distress, from your pain. Jesus deals with your pain. And faith in Jesus brings you peace. He will be in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. He will be in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. He's got you. He's got this situation in his hands. Listen, wait, wait is a big deal. Because if you move ahead, you just, you're just you too impatient. If the Israelites moved ahead, they would drown. They had to do it God's way. Don't go in until the waters parted. And then wait. And all the enemies are chasing them. And they're watching this. And then 
God closes in the water and destroys all their enemies. He's going to do this for you too. Thank God and praise Him for what He's doing, even if you don't have a clue what that is. When you're full of anxiety, you're full of confusion, you're full of fear, one thing you can do right off the bat is go, God, I know you're in charge, and I have faith that you're going to do it your way, and I'm already praising you for what you're going to do, even though I don't know what it is. I'm already thanking you, and I'm already praising you. It's faith. It's saying, I believe in you. I'm not just saying I believe in you. I actually believe in you. Sit back. Watch God rescue you for his glory and for the salvation of those around you. Rest in him. Sit back. Watch God rescue you for his glory and the salvation of those around you. You know, if you think you're going to lose your job, just do your best. Rest in him. If you're supposed to lose your job, you will. You think you're going to lose your house? Sit back. Rest in him. Obey him. But trust him. Maybe he's got something a lot better for you. And I can tell you right now, whatever he allows in your life is for your greater good. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. When the devil has you cornered, embrace this opportunity to grow and to show the world around you who God is. Rebuild your faith by reading his word and recognizing that the same God who paved a way for the Israelites will pave a way for you. He will. Guarantee you. The same God that brings down the giants and moves mountains and raises the dead and crushed the head of Satan is the God that lives in you. Believe in him. Trust him. Listen, wait, and obey. He has a plan way beyond anything you could ever imagine. Stay strong. Hold fast to him. This valley shall pass. And his glory will open the eyes of your enemies. What we are going to have in this next year is opportunity to show the world around us who Jesus is. It's by the way we forgive each other. Love covers a multitude of sins, the Bible tells us in Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. The love covers a multitude of sins. The world is going to watch us love each other. The world is going to watch us how we surround Sandy with love and each other. And we surround people that are struggling. They're struggling with drinking and drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality. And we're going to love them. And we're going to surround them. And we're going to encourage them that they can get out of that pit. And that pit isn't good for them. They already know that. People on drugs already know that. They don't need to be told that. They already know. What they need is love. Ins inspiration. You can do it. You went for a whole day without drinking. I'm proud of you. Let's see if we can do two days. That's what I needed. That's what this church did for me. Eight years ago. Nine years ago, I was a raving alcoholic. And I had people that wrapped their arms around me. And they inspired me. And they invited me into their homes. And they prayed with me. And they encouraged me. And I was able to get rid of the environments that were pulling me down, triggering me. Just stop going there. Stop, stop talking to them. And I had new people that inspired me to be like Christ. And I got out of the pit. And the pain, God took away my pain. If he can do that for me, he can do that for you. Maybe you're on the beach right now. And all your enemies are closing in around you. And you're afraid. And you're confused. Ask yourself, do you believe in Jesus or not? Because Jesus is Lord and he will be glorified. He will show your enemies who he is. The same God that brings down giants and moves mountains is the God that lives in you. Believe in him, trust him. He has a plan way beyond anything you could ever imagine. Stay strong, hold fast to him. This valley shall pass. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are a God that is in control. And God, we apologize to you. We're sorry to you because we, we so often doubt you. And we don't actually believe that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. We don't actually believe that you love us. And we don't actually believe that these circumstances are an opportunity. God, forgive us. 
and help us this year to embrace these circumstances, to show the world around us who you are by our love and to show your great power by parting the sea and we walk across and you destroy our enemies for your glory so that they will know that you are Lord and that we will be in awe of who you are. And we are in awe of who you are this morning, Lord.